Today I was over in San Bernardino uh, at the family court of Arrowhead, and I was there for an issue uh, in family law. Each time you have a dispute over an issue as you're trying to get through a divorce, something like that, you're going to have uh, each issue a lot of times is disputed and you'll file what's called a request for order. And when you're in front of a judge in family law for a request for order, generally you're limited to discussing issues that relate to that particular request for order. So if you're in front of the judge and you are you file the request for order, the other party usually files a response to that request for order. And then the judge hears your, both parties on that particular issue. It might be a request for modifying child support. It might be a request for modifying spousal support. Or it could be uh, changing, um, maybe you want to move and uh, you want to you know, file a move away order and getting permission from the court. Um, whatever the issue is that you file the request for order, the judge generally is limited to discussing facts that go to that particular order. So for example, if you have a request for order that somebody pay on, a pro on the property or make a payment on your car as you guys are working through a divorce, the judge really isn't going to be interested in facts that don't talk about that particular issue. So if the other party's bringing up how, you know, you're not a good parent or something like that, those really are things that the judge isn't going to care too much about because we're really kind of talking about limiting ourselves in the jurisdiction over one particular issue. So when a request for order is filed, it's really important that the other party file, and when I say file, I mean properly file, a response to that request for order. And your response may be more than just the court forms. It may mean putting together a declaration with facts, with evidence, uh, where you could you know, list different exhibits. It's information to rebut the request of the original party. And what often happens in, in San Bernardino, roughly in the San Bernardino County, approximately 85% of all family law issues are two people representing themselves in pro per. Uh, only 15% of family law issues um, are resolved uh, with, with an attorney by one or both parties. And so what oftentimes happens is, is as you're filing your own paperwork, you can make mistakes and those mistakes can be very costly. Um, for example, you could, on your petition for dissolution, you could put that your date of separation was January 1st of this year. And in reality, it should be January 1st of 2017. Well, the reason why that might be important is if it, the date of separation is this year, then as you're starting to divide up the, the community property, the amount of property you're gonna have to, to divvy up between the parties is drastically different if the date of separation is this year versus a couple years ago. Because usually if it was a couple years ago, it's gonna limit the amount of property that can be split between the parties and you can get uh, reimbursement for some of the community uh, costs that you've paid since the date of separation. So the, sh the summary of this story is, make sure if you're responding to a document, make sure that you actually file a proper response where you're filing it with the court, it's getting stamped, and then you're properly serving the other party. And then also make sure that if you're doing the paperwork, you're making sure that you're doing it correctly. If you can't afford an attorney, there are self-help areas at different courthouses that can help you. But in a lot of these cases, if it's not extremely simple and it's not extremely amicable between the parties on how things are gonna be handled, it's easy for things to get messed up if you don't have an attorney looking over your paperwork and helping you submit the proper forms to the court.